Welcome, welcome back to another edition of the Football Forever podcast, a podcast where we talk about the Liga MX and everything going on around Mexican football. Week two of the Liga MX in the books. That Pumas versus Necaxa match, let me just lead with that. That was exquisite. That was delicious. That was... That was just fire, straight fire, man. What a game, juegazo, partidazo, whatever adjective you want to use to describe that match. Uh, go for it, man. Go, feel free because that that was that was very very satisfying to watch. Five to three, Pumas takes the victory. But that's what you want to see from a losing team. You know, I know everyone hates to lose. No one wants to lose in all reality, but. If you're going to lose, you want to lose with your head held high, with your own play style, and and the way Nekaxa did, man. That, so, let's just get that you know, right out of the way. I wanted to lead with that. What a match from Pumas and Nekaxa. Uh, but yeah, man, let's get to, let's, let's get, let me give you what the other topics are, are going to be about in this podcast. What, what you could expect. America, we're going to discuss the America victory over Atlas, Chivas versus Cruz Azul. Uh, so the other results, obviously, from week number two, El Tri being on the hunt for a new leader. The transfers, man. What is, what 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 can we expect? Maybe is Ochoa going to be on the move? Is Eric Gutierrez, Chucky, Hector Herrera? Who's on the move? Who's going to stay put? And then the game of the week, in my opinion. The game you should look forward to and look out for this upcoming weekend in the Liga MX. So... Let's get, let's dive into the Pumas versus Necaxa match a little bit more in depth. This was, as you might have heard me uh, say uh, at the beginning of the podcast, the game of the season. It'll be difficult to top this match, man. Pumas has changed. Pumas has changed for the better. Pumas used to be Nico dependent. Nico Castillo and 10 more. That's what Pumas was for the last couple of seasons. If Nico didn't score goals, they were probably in trouble. Now, this Pumas team plays as that, as a team. Out of their seven goals this season, six have came from different players. So, Nico Dependence, I was worried and I was thinking Pumas was going to have a rough season a rough star, just it was just gonna be bad. I, I had them as one of my biggest losers this offseason because I didn't think they made great moves. But this Pumas team is looking to be pretty decent. Now it's still the start of the season, it's still the beginning of the season. It's it was only week two, so a lot could happen and this Pumas team could could fall off, you know. It, it's it's still very, very early. I'm not saying they're gonna be great, I'm not saying they're gonna be, you know good for the next for the rest of the season but i'm just saying so far you know with these two weeks with these two jornadas behind us they've looked decent they've looked pretty pretty all right so um nico dependence has not been a thing so far uh this season for for pumas and they're looking to have a clear a, a, a an entertaining idea of play um and like i said man they're distributing the ball People were scoring goals. Six out of the seven goals have came from different players. So you're doing something right. Now let's talk about Necaxa. Necaxa defeated America in the first week. They they beat America two to one. Here they lose. Um, although they lost, they show interesting stuff on offense, man. They continue to show interesting stuff on the attack. Victor Davila, the 20-year-old Chilean will end up in a bigger club next season if he keeps this form up. I, I am convinced. Tigres will pick him up. Monterrey, I, I, I don't know if you guys classify them as big clubs. Uh, I'm not saying I do. I'm still on the fence about that. But he'll end up in one of the contenders. I, I guess I should have worded it like that. Instead of saying big clubs, I should have worded it as one of the contenders for the title, which Monterrey is always there. Tigres, as you know, is always there. America is always there. Cruz Azul, now with this new roster, should be there in theory. So I think Victor Davila, if he continues 
with this form, he's going to end up at Cruz Azul, at America, uh, at Tigres, at Monterrey, you know, at a bigger club with with more aspirations. No offense and with all due respect to, to, to Necaxa. They're doing things well. They look good, they look good on offense. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to, to see how this season uh, continues to develop for them. So, yeah, man, fantastic game. The Pumas versus Necaxa match. That was delicious to watch. So, on to our next match that we'll be that we'll be discussing here. America, man, America back to winning ways. They're back on track, defeating Atlas 3-0 without a brilliant display. America didn't show, you know, brilliant stuff. It wasn't a perfect match from America. The first 30 minutes or so uh, was very, very leveled, slightly favoring Atlas, if if I do admit. Um, the first 30 minutes, Atlas was slightly better, not not crazy. It's not like they 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 were really really bothering Marche or or forcing Marche to make great saves or anything. But um, after the first 30 minutes, you know, America gets gets their first goal. They adjust and they take complete control of the match. After that, um, you really really didn't see much from from Atlas. Uh, Linus, Diego Linus, came off the bench. He actually got 20 minutes of game time. Um, but he didn't really, uh, Diego Linus didn't really make an impact, you know what I mean? Um, Cecilio Dominguez won't be back for two more weeks or so, so we should expect Diego Linus to, to continue to earn minutes with this first team. Uh, Diego Linus, uh, he got some minutes in the Cup, in the Copa MX match versus Veracruz last night. You know, I'm recording this uh, the following morning. Um, Diego Linus got some minutes uh, last night versus Veracruz, so it'll be interesting to see if Piojo. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and, and I'm expecting actually it's for Piojo to, to continue to give Diego Linus some minutes. But uh, he he has to start making an impact with the first team. I know it's difficult, you know, coming off the bench and making a, a huge difference. But he it's not like he he's looked bad. He definitely has not looked bad. He's shown interesting things and he shows that he's different every single time he touches the ball. He tries something different. Um, he gets past one, he gets past two, and where he's missing is that final step, that final, the, whether he takes the shot or, or whether he, he gives off a pass, he's missing that final touch to cement him as a, as a solid player and to really start the people getting on his side for him to start for Club America in the place of Ibarguen, whether it's in the place of Ibarra. I think Diego Linus plays best down the middle. Um, Piojo tries him on the right-hand side. Last night in the Copa MX match versus Veracruz, Diego Linus started as a right mid or a right winger. Um, but, you know, while he wasn't bad, he definitely doesn't get as much of the ball and he doesn't shine as bright as when he's coming, you know, right down the middle. That's when he's most dangerous. And that's where I would like to see the Linus because I think that's where he plays to his full potential. So um, it'll be interesting to see if he continues to earn minutes. Ibarwin isn't shining with America. He's not playing all that great. He's not playing horrible, but um, he's definitely not making a huge impact. So it's now or never for Diego Linus to start coming off the bench and start actually making an impact, whether that be goals or assists or just key passes um, for him to beat off Ibarguen and start for, for America. All right, man. So let's go ahead and discuss the Chivas versus Cruz Azul match, which was the match that I was looking forward to the most this weekend in the Liga MX. And unfortunately, it just it, it, it didn't deliver and it wasn't. Uh, any of the players faults it wasn't the coaches it wasn't you know either team really it was due to the inclement weather that did not allow either team to to put up a good performance to to put on a show it just rained a ton in in mexico or at least in uh, southern mexico because it was raining in the in the america versus atlas match it rained a ton in in the the capital and it looks like it, it you know guadalajara was not the exception it it was pouring man and and obviously the the pitch conditions just were not apt to to play football and that game honestly should have been canceled the conditions obviously were not good. There was puddles everywhere. It was very, very dangerous for players to play on that pitch. But, you know, 
uh, money and for other reasons in Mexico, the player's health and their well-being isn't the, the top priority. So they decided to, to give them the green light to play. And um, so that, that game just, you know, it, obviously it was not the player's fault. They just could not put, up, put on a good performance because they're in certain parts of the pitch. The ball would just stop rolling and, and it, it, it would cause a bunch of mistakes defensively. And, you know, it, that, that was disappointing. But, you know, what are you going to do? They decided to play on and, and the, the players did what they could. But Cruz Azul... Now let's talk about the match. Cruz Azul actually wins that game 1-0. Uh, Cauterucho actually, who struggled to score last season. In this match, he comes in and he scores right at the start of the second half. So Cruz Azul wins again, man. Uh, it's week two in Cruz Azul. Once again, not, not defrauding their fans. Uh, they look to be for real this season. So we'll see if they could keep it up um, and... and I, I think they're going to be a real, real contender this season. They're going to get into the Liguilla, and no one's going to want to face a team, a roster, uh, the talent that Cruz Azul has. So, um, like I said, it's still week two, though. It's extremely early to tell who's going to be in the Liguilla, who is for real. But my hunch is that Cruz Azul is for real this time, but they still need to be tested. They still need to go up against, you know, your, your, your tougher teams, and thankfully... This weekend, week three of action in the Liga MX, we get to watch Cruz Azul versus Tigres. So that match, hopefully, the weather is a little bit more cooperative this time, and we can see a, a great spectacle the, 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 in Cruz Azul versus Tigres, because I am looking forward to that match uh, like crazy. So let's go over, if you don't mind, let me pull up the, the results for the other matches this weekend in the Liga MX on Friday you had Morelia defeat Santos 3-1, uh, to one. you have Puebla Puebla at home defeating Toluca 2-1 to one. Querétaro defeating Pachuca 1-0 Lobos Boab defeating Veracruz 2-0, that was on Sunday you had Tigres defeating Cholos de Tijuana 1-0 also on Sunday and then you had Monterrey defeating Leon on the road. What is going on with Leon? You know, we're accustomed to Leon being a winning team, but the last couple of seasons, man, Leon just, they just have not had great signings and the team just has not been very, very good. There is a ton of frustration from the Leon fans because they're not used to this, man. So as as expected and as they should be, they're they're indignated and they're they're upset at their team and at the at the the front office, you know, Los Martinez and everyone else in charge of bringing talent to Leon or keeping talent at Leon. Um, they're at they're upset at them. So we'll see if Leon could bounce back uh, tonight. They have a they have a cup match, so we'll see how how it goes for them there. But anyway, man, let's go ahead and jump into our next topic, and that topic is about El Tri. El Tri being on the hunt for a new leader. Osorio was ruled out, or not ruled out, but they announced that Osorio, as we all expected, it was literally a shock to no one. He, you know, steps aside, he got offered a contract renewal and he decided uh, staying in Mexico is not what he what he wanted to do, man. Tuca, poor old Tuca, man. They've asked Tuca 80 million times do you want to manage El Tri? Do you want to be at the head of El Tri? Do you want to take the job with El Tri? And once again, and it looks for the final time, Tuca on Monday said no. As simple as that. He said, no, I don't want to do it. So finally, hopefully, the, the media and the news outlets, ESPN, Fox Deportes, Univision Deportes, Televisa, TV Azteca, whatever, all of them. Just leave Tuca alone, man. He's happy at Tigres. He, like I said in my last podcast, he has, or I think I said it in the, the announcement video for Osorio being out of the Mexican national team. Tuca has the keys to every building in the Tigres organization. He, he, he's practically his own boss. He makes the decisions. He's, he's financially, you know, set. His family's comfortable there. I mean, everything, everything, everything. Tuca just, uh, you know, he doesn't want to move, and it's 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 fair. He has a, f a fantastic team with Tigres, um, and he's a contender year in and year out. He's just comfortable. He doesn't want to jump into El Tri, which is everything but that. 
you know, it, it's good financially. You know, they're going to probably, they would probably offer Tuca a, a pay raise over what he's making at Tigres now, which would probably be difficult to do. But the Mexican Federation can can afford that. But, I mean, everything else, you know, would be would be stuff that Tuca is no longer used to and probably not interested in, you know. So, anyway, man, hopefully they could they could leave Tuca alone now and let's let's just rule him out as one of the one of the, I guess, contenders for the job. And let's start looking elsewhere. If you want to throw in Almeida, Herrera has constantly said he, his only focus is Club America, but you know, there you know he's still going to be in the mix. Uh, Villas Boas is another name that I've I've been hearing. Um, recently, we'll see, man. I, I really don't know, and I don't want to spend a lot of time just saying, like, oh, maybe it's this guy, maybe it's that guy. We'll see. Uh, if you ask me who would I want, I've given it some thought, and right now, if you tell me, like, hey, tomorrow, you got to decide, or right now, make a decision, I'll probably say Almeida, because uh, I like what he did with, with Chivas. Uh, he's proven that he could work with Mexican players, um, and, and he, he can gain their trust and their belief, uh, but you know, am I 100% set on Almeida? No, I'm not. Uh, I, I I really don't know. So, um, anyways, let, let's let's move on, man. Well, let's talk about the transfers. And and again, just like the the whole El Tri manager situation, the the transfers for Mexico Mexican players in Europe is also just a topic that I'm I'm kind of getting tired of, man. Herrera and Chucky were the ones that were heavily, heavily rumored to be on the move in the off season. You know, it's, uh, you know, a couple of days after the World Cup ended, or after Mexico's participation in the World Cup uh, had come to an end, you you were hearing Herrera's name, Herrera to Real Madrid because Lopetegui's there, and he, you know, he made Herrera captain in Porto. Chucky, he's you know on the radar of Barcelona, of Juventus, of you know all these other big clubs, Manchester United, um, but. Honestly, it just it looks to be like these two players are going to stay put. They're going to stay put at their current clubs. Um, Fulham, there's a report, a new report that Fulham from the Premier League offered for, for Hector Herrera. And Hector Herrera simply said, hey, I'm very happy at Porto. Uh, and I want to stay here as long as the club president and uh, the, the coach, the manager, want me here. So it seems like Herrera is more than happy in, in, in Porto and he really has no intentions of moving uh, PSV is also heavily heavily looking into retaining El Chucky Lozano for at least one more season and they're they're hoping to bring in Eric Gutierrez from Pachuca to to help keep uh, Chucky Lozano at PSV as, as we all know Chucky Lozano and Eric Gutierrez you know they've known each other for many many years since they were kids they, they, they both played in Pachuca Eric Gutierrez is still there in Pachuca so they grew up playing together um, and they would love to play together once once again so they've you know, PSV is heavily interested in, in Eric Gutierrez. The problem is that Pachuca sells them very, very expensive, and um, PSV wants to see if if Pachuca can Pachuca can loan him out, and then you know, a, 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 I think it would be a loan with the obligation to buy. Um, hopefully, it happens because I would like to see Eric Gutierrez play alongside Chucky, and more importantly, I, I want to see more Mexican players, especially young Mexican players, get exported to to the European leagues, especially in. in and solid teams that are known for developing talent such as PSV so anyway man just to wrap the podcast up we've been going for for a little while now and I think it's time my game of the week my game of the week for for week three of action in the Liga MX is for this weekend and you cannot miss this game and let's hope let's hope that the weather cooperates Cruz Azul versus Tigres simple as that you heard me mention it earlier Cruz Azul versus Tigres is going to be the first real, real test for this new Cruz Azul team under Ricardo Pelaez, or, or the under the new Ricardo Pelaez era and this new roster. Um, this is the first real test because Tigres is is tough, man. Tigres is my number one contender to win it all this season. They're, they're you know Guignac is I think he has two goals this season, one goal in each game. So he's looking to be his you know his good old self he's scoring goals Tigres is playing well not not fantastic but we all know Tigres tends to start tournaments 
on the slower side and then they they know exactly when to to you know get in stride and and when to turn up the heat uh and that's towards the end of the season so they 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 enter the liguilla the playoffs in in full full stride man tigres in the liguilla is a different animal and they do this year in and year out so um tigres right now isn't playing amazing like i was saying but they're always always tough to beat so that's the game that i'm looking forward to the most for the millionth time hopefully it stops freaking raining uh in mexico city and um and the pitch conditions get a little bit better because right now the Estadio Azteca is... So so they put down this new grass, right? And it's supposed to be a hybrid. It's supposed to be the latest in technology. All the top Euro European clubs are using it. It's 90% real grass and 10% artificial, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, today, as we're speaking, actually, there was supposed to be this award-winning groundskeeper uh, from Europe that's going to be visiting the Azteca and kind of looking to fix stuff. I don't know, but hopefully they could take care of that soon um, because the pitch in the Azteca used to be flawless, used to be perfect, probably the best field, the best pitch, the best grass in the league, and now it's right, uh, probably up there with one of the worst. So hopefully they could take, take care of it soon because... I miss the old Estadio Azteca field, man. The pitch was just gorgeous. So it's time to wrap it up, baby. It's time to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you have anything to add, any comments, anything, man, anything at all, leave them down in the comments down below. I, I'll read all of them. I'll reply to your comments. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Football Forever out.